Okay, destructive kata number one. We did it last year at a basic level. We'll do it again this year, so maybe uh, some of the people who haven't done it should uh, get with someone who knows it and learn it at a basic level as well. I'll take you through some of the intricacies of this form for those people who did it last year. This is where we must start to get into this scapular movement. As soon as you raise your hands, watch, watch the scapula. Now it's gone, you see? This happens in your push hands too. As soon as, rough. as soon as someone pushes on your hand, this is where you get your, your power band power from. So, uh, I'll do it to the camera first so you can, the camera can see as well. So watch, as soon as Ralph pushes on my hand, slack off. See that? Push again. So the harder he pushes, the more the scapula activates. It's tremendously powerful now, see? If I don't use the scapula, I have to go. So if Ralph pushes on my hand, now, see, I'm trying to hold him off using my triceps. I'm tr it's powerful, but it's not as powerful as when he pushes. Now I'm not using any. Uh, it's, it's just like he's pushing on a hoop, and it's force he's forcing this out. He's forcing this to come out, see? Now when he slacks off, it naturally goes in. So you've got to learn to get that happening. Thanks, Rob. It's like pushing a car spring. You push the car spring and the back of the spring forces on the object that it's attached to. So the power goes into the object, you see? Whereas if the car spring, the leaf spring, is just loose, you, you just push it on the ground, you see? So it's attached at the other end, that's the scapula. And when you push it, you compress. You compress the leaf spring, you see? And that's what Ralph is doing then. He's compressing this leaf spring. And it's get, this is where it's attached here, you see? It's attached. And so that's why that's pushing out. So as soon as you do that, see, look, as soon as I do that, watch the scapula, as soon as I raise my hands. They're both out at the, at the, at the moment. So when you do your Taiji form and you come to here, it comes down. This is the correct way to do this move. It should be difficult, by the way. This is difficult because you've got to pick this foot up off the ground after you've done maybe this move here. This is difficult. To pick this foot up off the ground and watch the hands come down. And when the hands catch up to the knees, heel and toe together, over a dome, and then down. As soon as I get into the posture, there's the scapula, see? As soon as you get into the posture, there's the scapula suck out. It's not wild, but as you get into it. So if you just go into left hands, uh, there it is there. That's the locked position. So no matter what my waist does now, my, my backbone does, the hands, it's nice because it's just hanging there. It's like as if it's uh, totally relaxed arms but you've got these suspension, this, these supports holding your arms up. You're no longer holding them up with your muscles. So n now what the backbone does, the hands must do. So if your backbone goes, boom! See? And it releases when you punch. See, look. I try and do it slowly. Watch the left one. And then back again after the punch. So you do it quickly, it goes, boom! Now it's back again, see? It's, it, uh, your scapula, in other words, is doing exactly the same as what your hand's doing. So it's going tense, released. Your scapula is doing exactly the same as what your dantian's doing. There's a direct connection. And if you feel, if you put your finger on your dantian, three inches below your navel, yeah. <laughs> can you <we> roll? <laughs> Just put your finger there. Do you want to see my face? Oh, yes. <laughs> Feels good. No, you can't be able to see it on the camera anyway, but I'm just saying that when the scapula goes out, you feel the Dantian move. Hmm. See that? And I'm not going like this. I wouldn't dare do that to Lowell. See, I'm just moving my scapula out. I'm, I'm locking it. Uh, and the Dantian's moving, you see? Thank you, Laura. Thank you. So what... <laughs> Laura, Laura, I love you, I love you. <laughs> so as soon as you get the scapula, it's not locked now, I'm holding my arm up with my muscles. As soon as it's locked, ah, you feel a little movement in there. So there's a physical, not only a, 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 a spiritual connection of the chi, there's also a physical connection straight down through the, I guess if we had someone, some great you know, physiology master here, he could tell us 
exactly why that happens. You can look at this skeletal thing and you can say, oh, this is connected to this and look at that. There it is, a, a purely physical connection, a lovely physical connection which enables you to fire boom, and not even do anything. You don't do anything. When you, when you do any of the fudging, you must feel as if you haven't done anything. Whereas if you go, well, you feel you've done a lot, but there's nothing happening at the end of your fist, see? Whereas if you just wind it up and you've got your scapula working, everything's connected, and you just let your backbone slip. Mouth, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, uh, uh, pah, when you go, pa, the tongue just moves off the hard palate and then it goes back. So the tongue at this, at this point is resting on your hard palate. As soon as you go, pa, it drops. For, um, in other words, the tongue does exactly the same as what your fist does, exactly the same as what your scapula does, exactly the same as what your dantian does. Because your tongue is a mediator between yin and yang. That's what the tongue is. That's why we have it up or down. So it's up to begin with. I always say to people, do pa. You can't do pa. <laughs> you have to go pa. Here, and then the tongue goes down and up instantly. It goes pa. I've never had anyone ask that, Colin. <laughs> Hadn't even thought about that. So having said that, I don't want to see everyone going, <laughs> it's got to be an instant just bah! just don't think about it just do the move all right so I explained that out because the first move of the first disruptive card are number one um, the penetration form makes use of this in particular the scapula 